Our next guest is a student. I wanted to bring on a student, and this was what really the big thing for me was people when I was, you know, talking on a podcast a couple of weeks ago, and the comment said, "Well, no one's going to have time for all those layers that she's talking about." Ugh, just tell the dog to do it. So Natalia, I'm going to get her name wrong. Nitzker. Natalia, you can tell me how badly I butchered that when you come on. Natalia is an elementary school teacher who enjoys working with dogs as a hobby. She lives in the state of Georgia with her husband, three sons, and two dogs. So Tabby is a five-year-old German Shepherd, and Kenna is a one-year-old Malinois. Natalia volunteers at a local nonprofit rescue and dog training organization, as well as a service dog training group, and runs a trick training group. And I believe she's done a trick for Wag Nation. I believe she has, and is a certified trick dog instructor. Natalia is an alumni of Homeschool the Dog and Recallers and a WAG Nation founding member. And Susan's programs, methodology, and podcasts are given Natalia a better understanding and confidence and able to work her dogs and spread the joy. Positive reinforcement and trick training is her favorite. Okay, let's bring her on. Natalia, how are you? Oh my goodness, you got my name perfectly <laughs> that's a rare yeah <laughs> and it's a rare for me Nailed it. <laughs> now it's official you I'm get a cookie you get a cookie i get a cookie <laughs> okay natalia i've got to ask you number one how old was kenna when you got her so um i adopted her she was five months love at first sight and um Everybody told me she's so mellow, Malinois, she's so chill. We got brought her home, you know, yeah. we worked with our German Shepherd, which was a little bit um, anxious. So we put in those layers that we talked about and um, we made it work. Um, then some true colors started kicking in and we've been working. And um, what helped the most is knowing from the beginning where to start with her and, um, working through recallers, you know, following the games in order, following the coaching and advice, what I've learned so far um, with working with Tabby before, it mm -hmm. just skyrocketed, you know, and just brilliant, brilliant. And um, as Kamal mentioned, you don't need a whole lot of time. You talked about quickies on the podcast. I don't have a lot of time, you know, with a full-time job and kids, you don't have a lot of time. So it, it works. So how did you do it? How did you, how do you tater salad wants to know as well? How <laughs> did you do like you're a school teacher and you've got a family and you all have another dog. So how did you find time to play those games? Um, so what helped me personally is doing a little bit of homework the night before I would watch the um, video. I would read the PDF kind of do my little homework the night before mm -hmm. So I know what I'm doing the next day. And um, in the morning, I try to structure the games that I play around uh, contingent times. Like, for example, in the morning when I'm waiting for my tea to boil, you know, to, to make a Perfect. cup of tea, coffee, we play a few games in the kitchen. Uh, you know, it's your choice as always on the go. It's 24-7, you know, working at door manners, uh, hot zone. It's ongoing. Then when I came back from work, I would also um, have a quickie, you know, going upstairs. Uh, when I go change, you know, we do a quickie upstairs and they know, they know by now that when mom is home, they're waiting on the staircase, ready to, <laughs> I took a picture the other day. They're ready to go looking at me like, are you coming? Are you coming? Yeah. <laughs> <We'll play. laughs> so just, they, yeah, they try to play it around time. something that I do on a regular basis. So it's, it's more of a routine for me and I know, okay, it's, it's quick. We get it done. We keep, you know, we get the day moving and. And what was the, what would you say would be the, the most difficult challenge between the two dogs, like either one of the dogs that when you were working through this, that you, you hit this wall and you went, okay, this is not going the way I thought it would go. Well, <laughs> even initially bringing Kina home, um, I didn't know how Tabby would react and um, mm. it did not go pretty. It was not pretty at all. And was she in a rescue? How did you like, because I know you work in a rescue. Is that where you found her? Yeah. Yeah. Ken is a rescue where I volunteer with, and they okay. were having a festival um, and they, they had dogs for adoption. there. just kind of, Perfect. You know, um, I helped walk her and I just fell in love. I'm like, this is it. But we need to make sure she, <laughs> she, um, 
she meshes with the other dog and I didn't want to put her, Tabby through stress. You know, obviously I didn't want to make her miserable. Right. So that first day um, in my, in the back of my mind, I'm like, it's not going to work. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's not going to work. The next day we work, thank goodness for muzzle training, you know, and thank yeah. goodness for conditioning, all those great tools that we have, the collar grab, the muzzle, you know, mm -hmm. she was familiar with it. Um, so we work through, um, taking them outside in a little bit more, you know, open space and getting them familiarized with themselves. So long story short, I think also Kina's demeanor and kind of attitude helped as well. The type of dog she is um, helped kind of neutralize some of Tabby's insecurities. And um, thank goodness, thank goodness, it's, you know, happy ending. <laughs> and was she a typical Malligator when you got her? Was there a lot of biting still? Or had she oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She, she was very unpredictable. Like, mm, the look in her face just i was like hmm, i can't even tell what you're thinking what you mm. she was very yeah it, i was a little bit even kind of unsure myself like i couldn't read her you know right so they're but they're definitely different than a german shepherd yeah yeah very different very yeah very driven but introducing the games you really see the you really see the change the the mm. sparks in their eyes you see the the joy you see the connection and it all just works beautifully from there it's magical magical that's brilliant that's brilliant so now when did you start like you teach tricks to all your dogs right yes ma'am and so so that is also part of that connection right so when it you, was when did you start introducing tricks to her? And when did you say, I see her now do what she's doing, saying, when are we training? Let's go. I want to do this. So originally I started with tricks um, with uh, Tabby, with the German Shepherd, um, oh, as a way to help her gain some confidence as well. Besides, you know, working on loose leash walking and obedience, right. that really helped her come out of her kind of insecurities and come out of her, I don't know how to say it, but that helped her become a little more confident dog and build connection with me. And I really didn't know what I was doing at first, <laughs> to be honest. I just kind of, you know, tried this, tried that. Then I started researching. I started reading books. I obviously, you know, followed your podcast, learned about shaping. And uh, we worked at first without the clicker, just, you know, marker words and whatever yeah. I knew. Uh, but then as I kind of, you know, got a little bit more knowledge and experience, um, when I brought Kina in, uh, you know, we started combining uh, recallers games with trick training. And it just became a model for training because you, in order to t teach a trick, which to me, any behavior we teach is a trick, you go yep. through those layers, you build it in small gradual foundations. So the dog gets it and the dog feels successful. So you have opportunity to reward and they love it. Uh, it's fun. It's fun for both of you. So it doesn't become a mundane kind of, oh, I got to train the dog. It becomes a, a game. It becomes an experience for both of you and you both look forward to it. This is a good question for you. What game is your go-to in a stressful environment? Huh, that's a good one. I guess it depends on the dog for me. Um, yeah, that's a good question, a good answer. Yeah, it depends on the situation and the dog, you know, with... Um, Kina, the Malinois, she's very quick and she's very driven. You know, hand targets is our go-to. Uh, search game is our go-to just to get her. Those were actually my favorites also when we were working through um, her insecurities with golf carts. She could not stand them when I got her. She wanted to chase uh, and cars too, but cars kind of faded out quickly with golf carts. It was, it took us quite some time to work through it. She was so over threshold. I couldn't right. even um, hand feed her. She was you know, grabbing. She was, I was afraid she'll take my finger off. <laughs> I think in one of your recolor videos, um, your year end video, you showed her, didn't you not chasing, but watching in a distance. I don't know if it was the deer. Yeah. The yeah, deer. Deer. Yeah. yeah. Yes, ma'am. Yeah. It was. Yeah. So I, I tried to learn, you know, I wish I found you guys sooner with when we got Tabby. So I, I tried to learn from all my mistakes that I made earlier and kind of build again, those, foundations early on as soon as I got um Kina mm. you know working through all those types of scenarios that I knew you know if I expose her and I show her what good choices are 
we can solidify that and uh you know instead of training the not we can train the do yes. live and do land yes so you got her at five months old when at what point did people say wow this is a really cool dog instead of oh my gosh what what's wrong with your dog uh, i mean she she's brilliant from the start you know we got we got to have that belief and attitude i yeah um even if you know when not perfect it's not perfection it's progress we're looking for but um exactly. yeah so it's it's just working daily just sharing you know what i know what i've learned um trying to pour that into her and sharing my joy with community of you know trick trainers of people and recallers. I think that's that's my kind of main thing to try to spread the joy of training the dog with game-based positive reinforcement tricks to make it fun, to make it engage and make silly videos. <laughs> Definitely she is a, a, a like a role model that you mean Aww. you turned around this uh, rescue dog who, yes, she was sweet. You had that going for you, but she still was a Malinois who had all those Malinois. Yeah. <laughs> was so um you know you've done a brilliant job and i wanted people to to see how somebody who who's a school teacher who is a volunteer who's a mother of three kids still can just you just it's, squeeze in the layers and yeah baby and, steps it's it's really possible it, it does require effort it does require some planning right and uh yeah. dedication patience but it, it is very doable because oh, you, you guys provide know. all the all the answers and you the community and the family and the support yeah well. let's give a shout out for the coaches because <laughs> yeah they are they don't they're the unsung heroes yes. of, uh, behind the scenes because, yeah so. they they do not leave a stone unturned so thank you natalia for being thank on you and sharing so your story and inspiring so many others for listening to you and thank you uh, congratulations yeah. again on the 200th podcast so exciting oh <laughs> thank you so much thank you yeah. and swagger says thank you as well <laughs>